Hi, I'm Kelly Vale. I told you once before, my friend. I sing lots of different styles, but jazz and blues really touch me when I sing them and they're a vocal challenge, so it's actually something challenging and something inspiring. I'll play for you. This particular project ended up being a dream come true. I worked with the most incredible musicians, the most fantastic engineer. Everything was phenomenal. The, the sounds of the studios I got to work in and the arrangements, the, the, uh, all of it, all of it was just terrific. Lift me, won't you lift me above the old routine? I had a, a voice doctor tell me that he wanted to do surgery on my vocal cords. And it all blew up. I thought, oh, I'm doing this now. <laughs> he basically told me he could do the best surgery ever, but if my body decides to create scar tissue, I could sound different for the rest of my life. Okay, well this is happening then. Indiegogo, call the musicians, call Mike Tarsia. Let's, th it's on. Take my blues away. I had no vision. All I knew was I had to finally do this. The pulling of the trigger started a chain of events that I couldn't even imagine possible. And brick by brick, it laid itself out and turned itself into the perfect yellow brick road. I always knew that Mike Tarsia would be my engineer. Mike Tarsia here. Uh, we're at Mike Tarsia Recording. I spent 33 years working in the family business, which was the original Sigma Sound Studios. When it came to choosing the studio, I left it completely up to Mike. Kelly was really into naturalness, making things natural, not using the toys and tricks of technology to make a record, but, but actually capturing the sound in the room. I knew that I wanted it to happen in Philadelphia, because that's my hometown. We did our basic tracking at a studio called M Sound in South Philly, pretty close to me. Part of that was because they had a grand piano that sounded fantastic and I had helped those guys with the sonic character of their tracking room so I knew the room, I knew what we could get out of the room. Uh, later on we moved the project to TTR Recording Studios in Germantown. They have a 2200 square foot facility and I can literally get any sound I want there. When we did the horns, I wanted the horns to sound like they were really projecting so we track the horns at TTR. And then finally, we decided to do all the vocals here at my facility because I have an ISO booth and uh, the vocals are the most important thing on any album, let alone a, a uh, jazz blues type production. The players on this record are Nothing short of brilliant, every last one of them. It started with the duo between Nick Bucci and me. I work with him as often as possible. He's always my first phone call. Then Frank Strauss on piano, Steve Vescroen on bass, Dan Monahan on drums, Andrew New saxophone, Chuck Gottesman trumpet, and Paul Arbogast trombone. Two of the songs have guest vocalists, Justin Binnick and Edwin Jacob on one song, Sharon Sable and Alyssa B on the other song. told me that I was right out of my head. I had chosen my favorite songs, songs that mean something to me, that really let you know who I am and, and what my tastes are. I wanted to do it my way. I, and there are a couple songs where I pay homage to Ella Fitzgerald and Joe Pass and Lambert Hendricks and Ross, but there are other songs. I love the song and they're fantastic and I, I just wanted to do something different with it. And Nick and I sat for hours and hours and hours and I nagged him to pieces where we made decisions on how we could do certain songs. We decided what instruments would be used on each one and we sat and we hashed out this song will just be the two of us and this song will be a trio. Here's quartet, here's quintet, here's full band. So that it's not just an array of different styles of music and different eras of music and different genres of music, but it's also different instrumentation as well. I 
had talked to Andrew New and he said, how many originals do you have on your recording? And I said, well, there's only one. And he said, you need more of them. I actually have this piece that I wrote several years ago and I haven't really done anything with it if you'd like to try and write lyrics to it. And he was so nonchalant about it while I'm bursting with honor that he would lend a piece of his brilliance to me to put lyrics on. It was, um, I think, the day after he had done a jazz fest and you're, you're so busy and you're running around and you're crazy and there's so much to do and there's so much excitement and then the day after you, there's kind of nothing to do. <laughs> I wanted the saxophone and Kelly's vocal to be equal levels, that they were both singing. And um, we kept the sax level up to her vocal level because of that. It, the sax was not an addition, it was, it was a part of the vocal performance to me. When I came up with the lyrics, I didn't want it to be that something sad happened, I didn't want it to be that it was something that made you sorry that you had been in that situation, but the hope that someday you'll feel that way again still lives there. It's beautiful every time I look my lovely with every glance. How much did I have to do with the choreography of this dance? I got that last phone call from that last musician who said yes and couldn't believe this was my life. So whose life poured out of me almost instantly. Even though they didn't even have music yet, they were a song. These lyrics were a song. And as I looked at them, just describing things in life that are fantastic, I decided right then and there, this is gonna be my title track. This is what this, it's not just gonna say Kelly Vale, debut CD. Whose life is this? Is is it, it describes this entire process. Very professionally, I posted on Facebook. Okay, all you jazz musicians slash composers, who wants to put some music to this? Within seconds, I get a private message from Jay Davidson, who said, "Let's do it." He read the piece of paper through once. And then he read through it again and he started to bop his head a little bit. And I thought, oh good, it's gonna be upbeat. So whose life is this truly is the story of, of the record, not just the title. Away, this song that is my life is a simply gorgeous hymn full of melodies and harmonies and the solos played with most difficult song that I ever heard. There's almost no pattern to follow and anything that's that difficult challenges me. Now I have to get it. The girls I knew had sad and sullen gray faces with distant gay traces that used to be there. You could see where they'd been washed away by too many through Day. The way Joe Pass followed and danced with Ella Fitzgerald's vocal can't be just put on a chart and, and thrown out at a gig. It, it's something that has to be 
worked on and, and both people have to care about it. It's what's in between what's played that gives the life to the music. And we had Nick out in the control room with me. We had headphones on. Kelly was in the booth and they both played together. And I think it was like three takes and we got the song and it was, it was amazing the interplay between the two of them. And you could tell that they played a while together because people that don't play a while together would never have gotten the song like they did. And suddenly the strangest things are happening. I hope it's not the last time. I have been a Harry Nelson fan since my parents introduced me to Harry Nelson as a child. His soundtrack to the story, The Point, is one of my absolute favorite albums. All the songs are terrific, but the one that just can make me smile no matter what else is happening is Point of View Waltz. Flying high up in the sky, I wonder why I think I'm gonna fall, I think I'm gonna fall, oh, oh. I decided to take it and, and just turn it into something absolutely beautiful. My two very dear friends, Sharon Sable and Alyssa B., there's nobody else I would have had. They came into the studio and, and it just became this, this explosion of vocal beauty between the three of us. And so it's already a song that's very special to me, but now I was able to represent it in a way that's beautiful and romantic and includes two of my closest friends and, and, and makes it three of the most beautiful voices that can come together in my life. Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. The thing that excites me about doing Kelly's record is that she wanted this to be a record that had everything to say if she wasn't here tomorrow. So what, what excites me about that is that it puts the artist on the edge of, of, uh, of being safe and being creative and I think Kelly went over that precipice of being safe and really pushed being creative. This is a real dream come true for me. It's been an amazing ride and I really am blown away that the answer to whose life is this is mine. There is no life I know to compare with pure imagination Living there you'll be free if you truly wish to be